The reading this morning is from Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 5. Then the new Jerusalem. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Doreen. Matt, if you'd like to come and join me. So I'm just going to pray for Matt in a minute, and then he's just going to very briefly tell us a little bit about what he's doing at Youthscape before he goes on to open yeah. God's word. So, Father, we just really thank you once again for Matt, Lord. And as he brings your word to us now, just fill him afresh, Lord, with your spirit. Thank you for the way you've been speaking to him. And Lord, we pray that by your spirit you'd speak to our hearts too, that we would go away, Lord, with a new understanding of you, of your purposes for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for having me here. This is, this is the church I grew up in. Um, all of my fondest memories of youth groups are definitely from this place with Lee Pinner playing the craziest games. And, and uh, nothing ever get broken, though. That's why, you know, you did say that. So... Um, so right now, I, I work for Youthscape. I'm a full-time youth worker. Um, I'm a neat intervention specialist, which uh, is just a very complicated title that no one ever really understands. Neat is a term that means uh, not in education, employment, or training. So my main focus is working with young people who um, are, don't love school, they don't really want to be in school, or they've come out of school, um, and they don't really want to be in college or anything. So my main focus is working with them um, getting them back in education, if that's right, or um, just helping them along the way. Um, but before that, I was, uh, I was a mechanic for Vauxhall. So I was a mechanic for Vauxhall for um, n- n- nearly almost five years. Um, it was like two months off five years. I should have just stayed an extra two months and made it five years, but I didn't. Um, and I, was, uh, I started as an apprentice, um, qualified, and um, really enjoyed that. But then I really felt like God was calling me to move on and be a youth worker. Um, I've got a question for you, a question for you now. Um, I think there's two types of people. Um, There are fixers, there are people who fix things, and there are people who replace things. Which one are you? Just turn to the person next to you really quick. Are you someone who fixes something and keeps it going, or are you something, somebody, uh, when something breaks, you just replace it, you just buy a new one? Just quickly turn to the person next to you. Is that right? Brilliant. Can I have a hands up for hands up for fixers and hands up for replacers? Okay, yeah, we're kind of we're kind of half and half, half and half. Um one of my worst jobs at Vauxhall, I did, um, I did quite a few jobs, um, from things like changing every single wire inside of a car. You wouldn't imagine how many wires there are. Or um, uh, we had one car that came in that had been in a fire, and it was my job to um, replace every single piece, get rid of, um, so you would never know it would be in a fire. Um, and that was, that was really bad. Um, but the worst job I uh, ever had to work on was on this car, which is the beautiful flagship Vauxhall insignia. I'm not here to sell you anything, I promise. Um, and, and what had happened is this, this Vauxhall insignia uh, was driving along the motorway at 70 miles an hour, I'm sure. Um, and then, also, there was this traveling in the opposite direction at maybe 25 miles an hour. And um, you, add them up, you add it together to get the collision or whatever. And um, 
It's not too bad, but what had happened is the pigeon had hit the headlight, and um, this doesn't actually look that bad. I promise you it was a lot worse. What had happened is the pigeon had totally smashed up this headlight, and um, it was my job to replace it. Um, what had happened, actually, the, the guy had brought the car in, and um, instead of going straight into the garage, um, straight to us, it had sat in the car park for a nice week in the, in the hot sun. And so it was, so was well-baked. Um, and it was really, really bad. It, it stunk. There was, there was blood everywhere. There was feathers everywhere. And um, so I put on my overalls. I uh, put on a pair of gloves. I put on another pair of gloves. I put on a face mark. I put goggles. I put one of those other big, bigger goggle things that go over your face. Um, I washed the car off first. I then, you know, removed the bumper um, took this headlight off. There was no way we were, we were going to fix it. Um, we then just bought a new part and bolted it back on. Um, this headlight, uh, we couldn't repair. There was no way we were ever going to be able to repair it. It was just something that we just had to replace. Um, another story about my granddad. So um, uh, when my mum and dad, when she, my mum got um, ordained, she moved up to, up to Felix, though. At the same time, I got my apprenticeship with Vauxhall, so I opted. Um, I chose to stay in Luton, so I moved in with my, in with my granddad. Um, and one thing I quick, quickly learned is that he is a fixer, um, particularly when he comes to his, his kitchen knives. Um, now, you, you know the shape of a kitchen knife. It's sort of straight at the top and kind of curves in roughly, right? Um, but uh, when uh, you've lived in Luton for over 70 years, like my granddad, and you've had the same knives for probably 70 years, and you've, and you've sharpened those knives for 70 years, they kind of look a different shape, and they kind of like curve in and then go up and across. So my dad is, is um, my granddad is definitely um, a fixer and not a replacer. Um, so we're looking at Revelations 21 today. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read it again really quick so it's fresh in our minds. Um, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth, first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe, wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the, or, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Um, and now different commentators believe uh, um, uh, we're not 100% sure who wrote this, but um, there's a good idea that it is John, the disciple, who wrote this. And um, it is God speaking to him in this crazy dream. And I think the best part about it that really, truly speaks to me, um, deep to my soul, is the bit where it says, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. Because I would definitely forget them if I wasn't told to write them down. And I think um, John was definitely one of those people. And there's another thing that really stood out to me, is um, the bit that says... I am making everything new. Um, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach everybody a little bit of Greek um, this morning. Um, so, I would, uh, I would like everybody to say the word neos. 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 Amazing. And then I'd like everyone to say the word kainos. Kainos. Now, in ancient Greek, there are two words for new. There's this word neos, which means brand new, unused, replace. And then there's this word kainos, which means something is made new. So in, a, in our modern English language, we just have this one word for new, but ancient Greek, there's these two, there's these two words. We've got neos, which is brand new, and kainos, kainos, which is made new. And now, interestingly, John uses the, the word kainos, um, which is a bit of an unusual word to use um, back in ancient Greek, so I'm told, um, because I think the... Growing up, there's this idea of heaven being this place that you go to when you die, um, that is somewhere else. When actually, in this, um, in Revelations, if um, if they're talking about um, God making everything new and using the word kainos, then maybe that implies that actually God is making this earth new, and we're not going to be going somewhere else. 
Um, if we look somewhere else, in, in Revelation 22, um, in the last chapter in the Bible, it says that the Garden of Eden is going to be restored. Uh, you may even say refined. Now, the Garden of Eden uh, is the same. It's talking about the same garden uh, as was in Genesis with the tree. Um, and it is saying the garden will be restored. Um, but, and instead of being a garden, it becomes like a garden city. It becomes bigger. And the history uh, of that garden is not forgotten. The, the tree is still in that garden where, um, where Eve took the fruit. Um, but the, the marks are still the same, but it is restored. It is refined. That word kainos is used. It is made into something new. God doesn't want to replace us. He wants us to be restored. There you go. Now, this is a photo of myself on the left. And this is George Allen. I don't know if you know George, my younger brother. Um, you probably won't recognize him now. He, I can tell you now he is not taller than me, although it might look like it in that photo. It, no, he's not. No, he's not. Um, and that is his first car. The other day I had the... the um, uh, a few months ago, I had the privilege of, uh, of doing a, a, a service on his first car. And as an older brother, that felt like um, quite a big thing. Um, now, I'm the middle of three brothers, as, uh, as some of you may know. And um, in all honesty, uh, I probably wasn't the best brother to George as I could, as I could have been. And, um, and uh, sort of growing up and looking back, I you know, my, mum's, my mum's just like, yeah, yeah that's true. Um, and, and, and looking back now, I, I totally recognize that. And um, uh, one quick story. We, had, um, we used to live on Elmwood Crescent, and we, we had a bomb shelter in our, in our garden. Or we had, like, the, the back entrance to a bomb shelter, so our, our neighbors had the actual bomb shelter with the steps going in. And then we had, we had like, the emergency exit or something. Basically, it was a hole in the floor that you could kind of get into. And I remember one day... Um, convincing George, my younger brother, to get in that hole because that would be really cool and that would be really fun. And then I ran off and got a wheelbarrow and put it over the top of it and, <laughs> and, and, um, and trapped him in there. Um, yeah, I know. Um, I wasn't the best older brother to my younger brother. And, but the thing is, my younger brother couldn't just replace me. He couldn't just... Um, uh, get rid of me and trade me in for a new, newer brother because that isn't a thing. That's not how, that's not how family works, um, annoyingly sometimes. But, and, um, but in fact, actually, our relationship was restored and refined over, over time and over us growing up and over us spending, to be honest, less time with each other. Um, and now, actually, we have a really good relationship and um, we get on really well. Our, I feel like our relationship our relationship has been made new, it has been restored, as opposed to it being replaced. God doesn't want us to be replaced. He wants us to be restored. Now, kainos means made new, made into something new. Jesus, after dying on the cross and resurrected, was made new again. After being crucified resurrected and then walking around for a few days, he still had the holes in his hands and the holes in his feet and the holes in his side. But he was made new again. He still bears the marks of his suffering, but he is made new as the Son of God. God doesn't want to replace us. He wants us to be restored. Um. And now, so this is, this is really quite hopeful, for, particularly for me, um, but I'm sure for everybody as a Christian, to know that actually when the Bible is talking about us becoming, becoming new, that actually that doesn't mean that God wants to replace us. God isn't just going to, when we become a Christian, we don't just say, oh, goodbye to our old selves, and um, uh, we are no, I'm no longer Matt anymore, I'm a totally new person, um, and my history isn't there anymore. But actually, it's, it's implying that I am... I am made into something new. That the, um, my past and my history and my brokenness is still there, but then there is, there is just ultimate forgiveness, and I am made into this new thing. And um, for me, that kind of implies that there's, that there's hope. There's hope there, and that God isn't just going to throw us away like that 
like that um, broken headlight, God isn't just going to unbolt us off that car and throw it to the side and replace us for a new one, but actually there's that refining process. And I think that does that goes without saying. It isn't something that just happens um, overnight. That actually that, that can be a long, painful process. But I think being focused and um, just seeing what the, what the Bible is saying in Revelations 21, verses 1 to 5, and when it's talking about God making everything new, and this new being uh, this word kainos, that actually that fills me with hope, and that actually God is here to walk through this journey with me, and I'm not there by myself, and it is going to be hard, and it is going to be painful, but God is walking with me through that whole time. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for us, um, if that's all right, and then, um, and then uh, I'll hand back over. Yeah, God, I thank you for Christchurch Bushmead. I thank you so much for the part, the part it's played in, uh, in so, many people, so many people's lives. Um, I thank you for the, uh, the part that it's played in my life. I, I know for sure that without this church and without the people in it, I would not be uh, where I am today. Um, and I would not have that relationship with you, God. And yeah, God, I pray that as we, um, as through life, we are going through this um, refining process, this um, this kainos, this uh, um, yeah, this journey with you, God. That actually we can we can be hopeful. We can be hopeful that you are that you are standing by us in our brokenness and in our failures and in our sinful ways. And you do not just want to throw us away and replace us, but you stand by us. Yeah, God, I thank you so much for your mercy and your forgiveness and your grace. Amen.